Hey guys, after an Olympic week break, we finally have Dragon Ball Super episode 55 and it was really a cool episode. DFG rating 8 out of 10. They showed what they wanted to describe in a perfect manner. I didn't see any major flaw. So yeah, I'm obviously recommending you to watch it. Now for the top 3 WTF of this episode, number 3, Whis confirms the Grand Priest is stronger than him. DBS is raising the power limits higher and higher. Never ever in Dragon Ball history Goku had so many allies who were stronger than him. Whis is already an obstacle which apparently is very hard to overcome for Goku and Vegeta. Then we meet the Omni King, ok he's the god of everything. But now, we have this Grand Priest, who looks to be the same kind of that of Whis and Vados. Surprisingly, he is even stronger than Whis. Whis is not even a match for this guy and he confirms that the Grand Priest is said to be one of the 5 strongest people in all the universes. Like I said in my last video, in DBU, smaller character often turns out to be the stronger one. This guy was whiz looking and small, so we kinda saw that coming. That's really big, where does Goku stand then? Maybe not even in top 10. This tells me that Dragon Ball Super won't be ending anytime soon. For now, we are 100% sure that we will get at least 72 episodes from the Blu-ray schedules. However, the way the story is progressing, I wouldn't be surprised if it someday reaches 150 episodes. Because Goku might not surpass the likes of the Omni King, but I don't see Dragon Ball Super ending with Goku not being in top 3 of the strongest shown characters in the series with Vegeta following him closely. Goku's aim is to be the strongest ever. And it would be weird if the show ended with like 10 stronger characters, even if Super ends early. This means we would be left with an extremely vast universe with a lot of storyline possibilities. Dragon Ball franchise is now everlasting. However, that's just my prediction. Number 2. The Omni King wants Goku to be his playmate. Yup, he didn't talk about the Omniverse tournament or Goku Black, neither did he wanted to make Goku a god, but essentially the way he is treating Goku is something no god ever got. He wants to be friends with Goku so that they can play together. Goku acted humbly but was a bit confused that Omni King invited him just for that. However, he promised him that he will play with him once his urgent work back at Ark is done and not only that, he also promised to give him a new friend. Later Goku admitted he had no one in mind for that at that moment. This take on the god of everything is interesting, very Toriyama-ish, but at the same time quite creepy. Think about it, the god of everything is acting like a 7 year old, however, Goku invites him to come to Earth. He likes the idea and surprisingly gives a button that can be used to summon him anytime. This is huge guys, just imagine it, a model like Goku has a fucking button that can be used to summon the god of everything. As we see in the episode, their travel to Omni King had nothing to do with Goku Black. Warned by Beerus earlier on, Goku avoided that topic, but this button might be the one to connect the dots. Remember Akira Toriyama said that the Omni King will be involved in a battle that will surpass the bounds of space and time? So Goku might end up pressing that button under a desperate situation while fighting Goku Black or it can happen by accident at some point or imagine if Black gets his hands on it. The point I'm trying to make is he might end up pressing the button at a very crucial moment of time. The Omni King's reaction would be interesting to observe provided how time travel is illegal and also how much Black is messing up the timelines and the universes. So my prediction is that the button might be responsible for getting Omni King involved in this very arc. Another noticeable thing in this segment is Whis and the Grand Priest didn't bow down to the Omni King like the Kaioshin. So it makes me wonder if there is someone even more superior of just their kind to whom they bow down to. Number 1. Zamasu kills a barbarian. A barbarian was trying to strike them, Zamasu defended it and then ended up brutally slicing him into two. 
with some kind of karate chop type of move. He was just in a different mood while doing that. You could just see the joy in his eyes. Gawasu had to like waken him from some evil spell. I wonder if that was the exact attack he was planning to use against Goku at the very last moment and was stopped by Gawasu. It looks similar and also I liked how they inverted the colors and the key from his wrist became like that of Black's. It was a bit surprising. I did mention this in my predictions video but I didn't think this will actually happen. I just wish it was a bit brutal and they showed some blood. Now going into details we see a lot of symbolism in the episode especially in Zamasu Gawasu scenes. Zamasu's involvement with black is getting clearer. We see this shiny pinkish petals floating all around the place and it's I think in a way is symbolizing Goku Black. Many people were pissed off with the idea of Super Saiyan Rose you know with the pink color but I'm totally impressed by the way they designed it. This is elegant and looks so godly. It has the widest shades of the god key too. However, Zamasu keeps on arguing with Gawasu about the models. His views didn't change and his mind is even more unstable which is reflected upon the T. We see more symbolism when Zamasu's face is reflected on the green Potara earring. The whole environment is set up in a way that I just felt like Gawasu will die any moment now. I'm pretty sure he will get killed in the coming episodes. At the very end, it is hinted strongly as Zamasu thinks to him, only observing is a crime. So Gawasu is only observing things and not letting Zamasu do anything, that is, he is also criminal in his viewpoint and must be killed for the greater good. Maybe that's how he will get his hand on the earrings, let's see. During his conversation with Gawasu, his frustration over getting defeated by Goku was expressed once again. He mentioned how dare mortals like Goku raise his fists against gods, possibly hinting that he might want to mess up with Goku. We don't know when exactly Zamasu's involvement with Black would be made clear, but do you think he could have something to do with Super Saiyan Rose transformation? Comment below and let me know. The Grand Priest looked very interesting to me. He is one of the top 5 strongest in all the universes. From the characters we know of till now, the Grand Priest is the second most powerful after the Omni King. That raises the stakes for Goku by so much, it must be hysterical for him. We can like finger defend Vegeta and Goku at the same time and even he is no match for the Grand Priest. Makes me wonder exactly how strong Goku would end up becoming by the end of DBS if he is to surpass them. Ok, finally Goku, Vegeta and Trunks reach the future timeline to battle Goku Black. Trunks find that headwear of mine. We know she is alive and from the preview of next episode, it is confirmed as we see Mai in it. The episode ended with some armed guys throwing missiles at Goku, I think they just confused him with Black. Overall, this episode really kept up the hype this arc has and I'm absolutely excited for the next week's episode. We are going to see this epic Super Saiyan Rose transformation which we see in the preview and it looks better than anything I expected it to be. In the next episode, Vegeta will fight Black. Be excited, be hyped. I will upload episodes preview and much more exciting videos meanwhile. Subscribe and remain connected with